The topic of this video is finding the domain of a function defined by an equation. Let's look at a problem. Find the domain of the function, capital F of x equals x minus 5, all divided by the sum x cubed plus 2x. Okay, I've written the steps over here, and I'd like to talk about them briefly. So the idea of this problem is very simple. We start with all the real numbers in the world as our domain. And then if we identify any numbers that we are not allowed to use in our domain, we remove them one step at a time. For example, we might remove some numbers in step two, or step three, or step four. Whatever we're left over with at the end, that's going to be our domain. All right, let's begin. Step one, start with all real numbers. Okay, I'm going to use a symbol that represents all real numbers. It looks like this. It's a lot like the paragraph symbol from an English comp class, only it's an R instead of a P. So this, this one mathematical symbol means all real numbers. Whenever you see me write that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Start with all real numbers. All right, step two. We look for any even index radicals in our problem. Remember, an even index radical would look like this, and then there would be an even number here, like a 2 or a 4 or a 6. Well, we don't have any of those in this problem, which means this step is not applicable, and we will not be removing any numbers for that reason. So at the end of step two, our domain is still all real numbers because we haven't removed any. All right, step three says log arguments. Well, I haven't taught you logarithms yet, but if there were any logarithms in here, you would literally see the word log. And since that's not in this problem, this step is not applicable, which means once again, we haven't removed any numbers. And so at the end of step three, our, do our domain is still all real numbers. All right, step four. Denominators are not allowed to be zero. So we do have a denominator. It's x cubed plus 2x. And so we have to solve the inequality. x cubed plus 2x is not equal to zero. Now the most common mistake that students make when they get to this step is that they also indicate that the numerator is not allowed to be zero. But that's not true. Numerators can be zero. That's no problem. If a numerator is zero, like this, that just gives the result zero. Remember, a numerator tells you how many of something you have. The denominator tells you what type. So if you have zero fourths, that just means you have zero. It's only when a denominator is zero that we have a problem. Four divided by zero is undefined. So in this problem, we set only the denominator to be not equal to zero and solve. OK, let's solve this by factoring. The greatest common factor here is x. So when we take out an x, what will be left would be x squared plus 2 is not equal to 0. We'll now use the zero product property and split this into two different statements. x is not equal to 0, and x squared plus 2 is not equal to 0. Notice that we've now learned something about our domain. We are not allowed to use x is equal to 0. But we have to continue solving this. And so we continue on and we say, x squared plus 2 is not equal to 0. Subtract 2 on both sides, we get x squared is not allowed to be negative 2. Now, I'm going to pause here for just a moment. You could take the square root of both sides, but I actually don't want to. I want to stop and I want to think. Remember, the definition of domain is that it's the collection of all of the real numbers x that give us real numbers for y, which means we're only allowed to use real numbers for x. What happens when you square a real number? Well, let's explore all three possibilities. If x is negative, a negative squared makes a positive. If x is 0, a 0 squared makes a 0. And if x is positive, a positive squared makes a positive. So think about the three results we got. Positive, 0, positive. When you square a real number, the result has to be positive or 0 and can never be negative. So this statement is not telling me anything new about x which means I can ignore this completely, and my domain is going to be x is not equal to 0. So my final answer for this problem is x is not equal to 0. If I wanted, I could write this in set notation, the set of all x such that x is not equal to 0. Now, some students pre prefer to see an alternate explanation of this last piece of this problem. So let me go ahead and provide that for students who prefer to see it. If you were to use the square root property from intermediate algebra, you would get x is not equal to plus or minus the square root of 
negative 2, which becomes not equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 2. Now, what kind of number is i times the square root of 2? That would be an imaginary number. And again, I remind you that the definition of domain is the collection of all the real numbers x that give us real numbers y. So what this is telling me is that x is not allowed to be this particular pair of complex numbers. But we were never considering complex numbers to begin with. We weren't imagining that we would use any imaginary numbers as part of our answer anyway, which is why this is irrelevant and not part of our problem. So our final answer is x is not equal to 0.